On this week's episode of the Counterculture Podcast, we are officially living in The Handmaid's Tale. Oh my. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Counterculture Podcast. I am Taylor, along with my good friend Christian, and uh, we've got a good one for you, but uh, first and foremost, how's it going? You know, man, I tell you what. First of all, that was a great intro. Oh, I must say you. that was a very great intro. Uh, it's going it's going great. I guess, you know, we we're you know, we before we, we start recording, we'll let y'all in a little, a little little bit of personal uh stuff before we get into It was not coordinated. I know we say that all a lot, but It really wasn't coordinated, <laughs> yeah. So the other day I get a text from from Taylor, like, hey, like I like basically I did a thing. He sends me a picture of this beautiful uh a Nissan Titan uh diesel. All right, white uh, lifted a little bit, tires, all that kind of good stuff. And what's funny is the day before, technically, he had, he had said that I had also purchased a vehicle. You did. You were keeping secrets. I told you the same day. You did. Oh, man. Which I, you know, um, one of us is a better friend to the other. You are a better friend than I am, um, because I am I'm not a great anything to anyone. Um, so, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so we although. As much as I would have loved to have purchased a truck, at the same, well, funny thing, I texted you, me too, and you're like, "Oh, bro, bro, you got a truck as well." And no, I actually went the very conservative, logical route to go when you ha- when you are a dad of three children, which is buying a van. I I am part of the van life. You I are, have joined you are the full van full on like Will Ferrell kicking and screaming. Like. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, so I mean. Uh, it was a Honda Odyssey is what we got. It was uh, for me. I actually I love it. I'm I'm not even gonna pretend I I uh, to to like be like oh no I love it. I really do. And you know what's here's it is so practical. It is it's the most practical vehicle I have ever had. And what's funny is the more the longer I've had it, it's only been a couple. It's only been less than a week. But the more I love it. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even being like silly. Is I used to dog parents that would get vans really oh absolutely i've always been for it my wife no not at all <laughs> i've tried to chip away at that that facade that armor for a while i'm like well we'll just get a cool one maybe i'll like have it on like 20 inch rims nothing too fancy but it, it'll look good maybe lowered <laughs> i'm not talking like a like a body kit or nothing but it'll look it'll be a nice van yeah she still says no so you know what's i kind of envy you you know what's funny is christina was not in the van camp until number three number three was actually here so you might be surprised once y'all once you have your third once the the, mm-hmm. the, the little uh, uh angel is finally here you, you'll be f- it'll be funny how that can change because a part of it is i understood why like well you know do, but now we're like i can't believe we didn't do this sooner. years ago yeah yeah I, I, I cannot believe and so it really is and you know what's so funny and i i thought about this actually is you know, I was on my, right now. Uh, Eli is in VBS. So he's been in VBS this week. What is that? Oh, Vac- vacation. Bubble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's been going to VBS every week, and so uh, a, a lot of times, like uh, a couple of days, I've taken him myself in the in the van, and it's funny. And I'll I'll just bring uh, Lila with me, just you know, so just uh-huh. you know, why not? And I, there was one day where I'm, I I almost had this realization. You know, I'm like driving, and I have the kids in the back, and I have a Spotify list, uh, a playlist that's like all the like kids songs, right? From either movies kids or whatever. Bop. No, not kids Bob. Cause that's, they can't hear you. They're listening. Kids, to kids Bop, Bop. Is, is super cringe. No, but it's like, you know, uh, Disney classic f- songs right. and like stuff from like sing and sing too, like just stuff that they, from songs from movies they like. Right. And I was just thinking to myself, I'm, this music's playing. And I can hear them kind of singing along in the background. And I, I, I was laughing to myself because I thought how there's so many people who would look at this situation and be like, oh, like it's terrible. Who would ever want to live that way? All this kind of stuff. And for me, I was like, I am so happy. Hashtag blessed. Absolutely. I'm like, I'm so happy to have these two kids. Right. Well, you know, two of the three were with me. Right. I'm all I'm I'm ble- I'm so mm-hmm. uh, just grateful to have these three children. Uh, I have a, a certainly a parent's vehicle, no no question about it, and so many people would look at that as a. Uh, 
cringe or yeah yeah or cringe or like wow like so typical like, right, right or like there's so much more to life. And, and you know what's so funny is i've never felt not because of the van but you know obviously sure? <laughs> yeah but it, and, and we've talked about this is being married and having children has just been the greatest fun and the greatest joy in my life and like again like the van kind of encapsulates like that <laughs> yeah you've, the parent life you've reached your final way. form right, exactly right i am i am the final form of that right um but it's been it's awesome you know and so for me i'm like you know it, it, and I, I had the realization because you know it's very typical like in movies mm -hmm. you'll see you know, there's dads, or they'll sometimes depict moms where they, they have a van, they have children. I mean, it's in every movie. I mean, look at Hollywood. You got grown ups. Um, what's uh, Daddy's Home or Daddy's Gone? What's the John Cena, Mark Wahlberg, Will Ferrell? Uh, it's a Daddy's Home. Yeah, Daddy's yeah, it's home. Daddy like, home. Yeah, which one and two, and yeah, I mean, it's it's everywhere you look. It's that, or like this is forty, or mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Although this is forty is really is funny. funny. That's yeah. a, if you're married, it, that's a it gets funny movie. As yes, you age. Yes, it does. Him's more relevant. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and again, I, I it, you know, those movies are funny, and I think they're relatable. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times they kind of depict being a parent and being, um, you know, having children and being married is is so burdensome mm -hmm. and not fulfilling. Now, granted, a lot of times that towards the end of the film that you they 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 the person oh we're still talking about movies yeah well <laughs> uh, movies us you know. They realize that at the end of the day, the life they've chosen is actually very fulfilling and, and does have beauty to it. So they do usually come to that conclusion. But a lot of times Hollywood can depict the idea of being a parent. Well, and they joke about children. it and they poke fun at it the whole time and then make it kind of somber and happy at the end. It's just kind of right. And honestly, depending on your, your view on it, and it's nice that you had that little epiphany and realization. But some days it's hard. I mean, that's oh, every yeah, parent yeah, knows. Yeah. And you're, you're so dialed in we were talking about our both of our boys earlier before we started this about how <laughs> yeah. they've been giving us attitude and rolling their eyes and such and uh about how like it's hard not to yeah. be too strict or or this but yeah we uh we had a little date night me and my wife uh the in-laws not the in-laws but my sister-in-law ended up taking the kids and having like a whole sleepover thing on a weeknight so it's like tuesday night and we got to go on on a dinner date and then you know, no oh, nice. kids came home, so we're like, "What do we do? You know, you don't have to do baths, you don't have to do anything." So yeah, we ended up starting to watch it, watch a show by like seven thirty. We were like watching TV, and by the time we'd watched a couple shows, or I think it was a full on movie and everything, it was like nine o'clock, and we're like, Ooh, "It feels late, but it's it's not because our whole routine had moved." Right, and right. waking up, not to having like kids jumping on you or you know grabbing stuff out of your room at seven six thirty in the morning, <laughs> it was it was weird. And sometimes it takes those little moments or like a realization like you did to realize, man, even though, you know, the little moments of every day can be rough or, you know, miserable, you know, rolling out of bed, wishing the kids let you sleep for 30 more minutes. It's when they're gone that you realize I'm, I'm more upset now. I'm, I don't realize how blessed or how fortunate or how fulfilled I really am yes. on the day in and day out. Yeah. Kind of makes me, I don't, I don't want to say like get sad thinking like too far into the future but you think about the empty nesters and yeah. stuff like that when they're when their kids go right. off to college and how sad they get for a while and come down and depressed and i'm like oh they should be happy their kids are finally gone it's like my kids left for a day and i kind of had this little wake-up call i'm like i can't imagine when they're gone gone no absolutely but, you know what's funny about that is is recently my my parents took the kids overnight as mm -hmm. well i think i i think i had like we were talking when yeah. this happened and, and it was the same thing you know we we got home and it's like you you have uh, you know a movie and we're like what do we do you know the house is silent and it's almost like sometimes even when you're when you're with them you know you want a break but what's funny is when the break comes quote unquote like if you know your you know, your sister-in-law uh took the kids or my yeah. parents took, you're like okay i i want them back now I, yeah I, my like break is done and 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 so it's funny how you have that cycle where but again i guess it goes back to that saying you know you know what is it um absence makes the heart grow fonder or something like that right you know and so you, you love something let it go <laughs> the <laughs> you back, it'll come back. <laughs> but kids always come back yeah they never well, go teenagers look yeah they don't go away um, you gotta chain them to the bed yeah cause... so it's yeah it, it was interesting you know and it is oh sorry no you're good it, it just it makes me think because obviously you know one of the big things for our show is you know obviously talking about 
upholding the values, uh, uh, traditional values. Traditional that values, includes, but I mean, our values more well, importantly. Yeah, are, you know, yeah, and they're ours. They, they, it's not just traditional, mm-hmm. but we try to embody them the best we can. Right? We're, right. We're I mean, there's not some perfect. values that we may not even abide by or, or believe in, but I mean, the ones we do hold dear, we, we talk about. And the sad things, as we brought up before, is that's not really popular right now. Uh, it's not popular in 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 like media the, in the t- in media yeah. and in in the I guess the cultural conversation. But with the average American, I I think we align ourselves more with the average person in the United States than uh, the corporate press does in, in a lot of ways. And I think it's showing by what is taking place right now culturally is actually pretty major. Well, and it's what been, we're seeing it's with exciting. the backlash of like these new Disney things, like all the oh different little things Lord. that are coming out where they're trying to slip these little, I mean, every fanboy likes Easter eggs, you know, don't th- but these are different kind of Easter eggs. <laughs> these are gay eggs. I'm just kidding. But no, they like, they slip it in. Like they're trying to indoctrinate your kids and they're doing it almost like in spite. We've, we talked about it where we covered, covered it months ago about the execs in that leaked zoom. Call right. Where right. they were almost laughing about it. Like we're going to put it in every little thing we can. Right. It's a, it, it, she says, I remember what it is. Uh, the not so secret gay agenda. agenda. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. How, I, again, that's not my words. It's not your words. It's not, you know, mm-hmm. a Ben Shapiro, or whoever, you know, scary right wing person. It's she, uh, the, the Disney executive mm-hmm. said that. I'm not accusing her of that. She's saying that's what they're doing. So right. what am I supposed to take from that than what she's saying? I have to assume that she's telling the truth. It, it's their words. <laughs> yeah, it's it's their words. And and so you see and and, and what what's important about it too is that for us we have to cont- is the market will respond I think ultimately mm-hmm. to the pushback, but it's going to take us a couple of years before we see it because, you know, things like, you know, uh, whether it's Lightyear or like one of the biggest things going on right now is like that Baymax clip from that the Baymax uh, uh, series on Disney Plus. Is mm-hmm. that series has probably been in the works for two years. Yeah. So that's from two years ago. That's coming uh, to light now. So we ha- we are not going to see a, ch- a real change until two, three, four, right. five years from now. So we have to keep pushing and pushing. But again, but because it's being released now, it's a simple edit. They could get rid of it. I mean, clip it out, blend it in. Or do a little sick transition. I mean, I've been doing some of our video editing here, and it's not that hard, you know. <laughs> it's no, I, I, they right. want to make a point, and yes, I yes. think yes, ultimately, will it take some time for the market to respond for these corporations to kind of wake up and realize that the majority don't hold the same values that they do. It's the media pushing it and making the smaller voices the loudest, and you know, it's it's I don't want to say nuclear families, but it's families that hold you know, the more traditional values like ours that are being silent that ultimately will make that push. But yeah. we're seeing other private companies starting to make a bigger stand. I mean, look at the, the Daily Wire. They're switching to the Daily Wire Plus now. They're putting out their own uh, kids shows that are in the works. Yeah, the next um, year, yeah. They yeah, yeah, put yeah. out a couple of films, at least one, if not two already that I know of. Uh, well, they've done... Uh uh, run, hide, fight, shut in, high pier. So four. They, they four. have four films. Because I knew they were doing like a Prairie on the West one with yeah, yeah, Gina Carano, uh, right? Terry on the Prairie, yeah. Which is uh, for anyone anyway, again. I, I mentioned I think in last week's uh, show or la- one of the last recordings. It, 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 so give yourself a daily wire subscription, even if you want to just do the, the one month just to watch the Gina Carano film Terry on the Prairie. It is worth it. It's a great, if you, especially if you love westerns. Fantastic, I'll super intense. I have not watched it yet. You'll you'll like so. it a lot. You'll 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 like it a lot. But I think we're seeing a cultural shift, and I and I think ultimately, in a lot of ways, the left has only themselves to blame for that because they've been pushing so hard in so many ways that now again this goes back to things like whether it's Joe Rogan or Elon Musk of you push so hard and now you have you know Elon Musk voting Republican. It's not because right. he's conservative. No, <laughs> it's not push it. coming to shove. They're going so extreme that they're getting this pushback. So much so that it's shocking them. Mm-hmm. Uh, forget, um, it's the the black comedian. She went on, a, not Fallon, but Colbert. And she was oh, talking Wanda about... Oh, Wanda something. I can't remember her last name. But, her but the fact that they're Wanda. saying, you know, she straight up was saying, democracy is dead. Democracy is dead because of this whole, I mean, our main topic for the day with the whole Roe vs. Wade thing. It's because of democracy that we're getting to this point. Like people are, are tired and they're pushing back. Right. Well, what's funny is, is she says you know, one of the most telling things that she said actually in that in the in the interview with with Colbert is that she said you know majority doesn't rule anymore. And for me, I'm like you know 
it, it, it just shows you like when 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 the when the who do uh, they think unquote, is the majority? You know what I mean? Well, well, it's not even that. It's that that was never supposed to be this way. It, America was never a pure majoritarian uh, no, democracy. It's a republic for a reason. It's a rep- it, yeah, it's a constitutional republic. And uh, again, people don't seem to realize that it, there's democratic. Uh, 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 avenues, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. we vote for Congress people, mayors, senators, president, all that kind of stuff. But we are a constitutional republic. We are not majority rule democracy, right? And thank God we're not. And that's because that way it's not mob rule. It's not majority wins. It's mm-hmm. not these overpopulated cities who don't share the same viewpoints of the rest of the country or these rural areas, mm-hmm. which is why a republic works and it's why it's a checks and balances system. Correct. Right. So these smaller areas can have a voice. That is why it's all the more important that Roe vs. Wade got overturned, in my yes, opinion. Yes. It's not a federal mandate anymore. It's to the state level where the state and your local representatives have more power. You, as the voter, have a bigger say now yes. on what happens in your state. Right. You should be happy about that. You, they, they should, but but it's because— Because it, people aren't educated enough. Yeah, correct. Yeah, absolutely. They're, people think and they believe media and they tweet and they retweet and they share— Without doing their due diligence, and they think abortion's just banned. And I got a, the Green Day guy. I forget his name. I hate Green Day. I used to listen to him. Billy Joel. Billy, uh, Joel. Billy Joe. No, Billy Joe Armstrong. Armstrong. Yeah. yeah, dude, he's living in the past. He still looks like he he still dresses and does everything like. I have super he cringe. Is, <laughs> he's the millennial that still. But he's won't like F. Him. Did you see the clip? He's like yeah, F yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm leaving. He's I'm in some be- European country tour, which again, it's like, bro, you're like, no one well, in America remember- wants to watch you, right? So you're having. Well, do you remember tour. everybody who said that they were going to leave because of Trump, and nobody actually left, right? Because it's they like- realized how crappy the rest <laughs> of the world is, right? It's like, go back to Canada, dude. But anyways, but is he Canadian? I believe so. They probably are. Green Day's. I think they're all three Canadian. Whatever. Probably. They probably are. Fact check me here. I'm going to leave a up. comment. You know. Just keep going. I'm going to look it up. Uh, but yeah, like. If you don't like it, then leave. But everybody thinks, and with sharing videos like that, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, if I like Green Day, if he's going to say that, I'm going to leave too. And they like, share it. And the next thing you know, everybody thinks, oh, boy, no, he's from bad. Oakland. Oakland? Yeah. Mm. Might as well Some be of can- them are from Canada. Might as well be, he know. might as well be Canadian, honestly. Basically, California. Beautiful, beautiful state. One of the most beautiful in the in the union, <sighs> but yeah, this is a garbage state. But you know, so, so actually, before so this is really guys. Right. So before we get to, because obviously we don't want to bury the lead, because we're you know, we're going to talk about Roe. But uh, make sure you uh, like and subscribe to our channel, share the show with your friends, uh, leave a comment, please, um, and also of course we're on Apple, Spotify, leave a five star review, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and so I want to make sure I, you know, got to make sure you fit that in, right? Yeah. Um, and then, but 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 hit that po- bell. Yeah, yeah, hit the notification bell. Yeah, cause, so you can get notified when we upload. Um, yep. And so, but no, you make you make a really good point. Is that it's a, it's a lack of education. People just simply don't understand how these things, work. and it just shows you how mon- emotionally manipulative the how impressionable these sheep are. Well, and I hate very, the word sheep because it it's a very red wave, a very, you know. I don't know. I just right wing thing to say. Yeah, they're like, kind of oh, putting you're you're a, sheep. You know, they're going to put me yeah. in a box saying, "Oh, you're just one of them because you use the word sheep." But really, it's like, mm-hmm. like, but I think it's a fair assessment, right? When you when you're it just is. Going they're so to manipulated. Say the new next thing, right? Know. Whether it's been again, whether it's been BLM, Ukraine, mm-hmm. uh, 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 but you, know, you can the see people, the agenda. Right? It's, it's like, what's yeah. next that we're going to make their focus and draw their attention to? Yes. What's the shiny object in the corner while this hand is doing something different? And it's one thing after another. And now it's Rover Wade, and what's what's going to be next? Right. Well, again, they've been, well the biggest thing they've been trying to do is the January sixth stuff, which again, you know, for us, we haven't even. It's such a nothing. I don't think we. I, I think that's the first time it's been mentioned on our show. Yeah. At all, because I, no one cares. And the only reason it, it's only becoming relevant right now is because of that silly story. I don't know if you saw from that one Trump aide who talked about him trying to like grab the wheel of the uh of the limo that he was in to try to like uh like basically steal the car to go to the Capitol. it's just it's wild oh, it's I, stupid it's it's ridiculous i mean the memes about the, it have been great is that the the reason where there's that meme of tiktok where uh trump's face is on captain america in the elevator scene on tiktok yeah yeah yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. and they also have you ever seen um i think it's uh olympus has fallen there's a scene in that movie. I don't know if you ever saw it. it was, oh, you know, I have. Okay, where they're where they're flying, where they're driving around in like the uh, in front of the White House. I think it's Olympus has fallen, right? That's the one with the. Uh, is, is it Jamie Foxx? I think. And, no. And uh, Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler and Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. That's what, yeah. 
And so I and, and they like superimposed Trump's face like on it's just so so stupid. It's so dumb. And what's funny about as soon as this Cassidy Hitchens or whatever her name is, like did this um uh testimony, like there there was like four or five different Secret Service guys that were like, Yeah, I'll t- I'll go under oath and tell you that she's lying. <laughs> It's like it's well, so that's like stupid. the AOC was like they were coming door to door like you mm-hmm. were in a different building. Yeah. And also it was an it was an hour before anything happened. So you're a liar. But again, these people, they just hear her speak. And but she's and like she a just, celebrity. She was the one on. Um, she wasn't mm-hmm. Colbert. I think she was Stalin, but it was Colbert. Recent. She the, was on the Colbert recent too? one. It was the they're Colbert, all yeah. Colbert then, huh? Well, he's, he, he's basically... He, oh, that's he, right, because he was asking her if she was going to become president. president. Oh, cringe, bro. Uh, My goodness. I mean, he, I mean uh, Stephen Colbert is nothing but just a political propagandist at this point. And, it's sad, and he's also like bad him. at it. I used to think that Jon Stewart mm-hmm. went mm-hmm. went left and that Colbert was the last safe haven. And really, it was a weird flip. Stewart's become kind of... Well, Stewart's basically stayed in the, the middle, same-ish. Kinda? Well, he's kind of stayed the same where Colbert's gone like full-blown... Far left, left woke, yeah, yeah. Stewart still left leaning, and he's got his views, but he didn't fall victim and and go all the way. No, yeah. So and now just, when he's still saying the same things he's believed the whole time, yeah. they're saying he switched camps. That's funny. Well, again, it, it just it, it goes back to what I was saying before with 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 Rogan, Elon, and and, and so. But again, well, I mean, it's, it's this cultural shift moment. that's happening. You know, it's like if you're not with me, then you're against me. Only a Sith does an absolute. absolute. <laughs> I'll do what I oh, must. That's, you will that movie try. is so good. Okay, speaking of which, a little tangent. Did you finish Obi Wan? Yes. What did you think? Uh, last episode uh, should I have get, been like the whole season. Yeah, basically, if they if I had just given me the last episode, I'd be like, okay, that's cool. I I, I really enjoyed the last. Because what's funny is if you take out the rest of the series, it doesn't make the last episode any different, really. No, not really, not by much. Uh, Reva sucks. And we're gonna get a Reva spinoff series. I'm calling it. I'm, I'm calling it. Uh, and again, ultimately, the, the, the word to describe the Obi Wan series is just disappointing. Yeah, it. It, it was just disappointing. That's all. That's all I can say. And and it, it, it's upsetting just because it could have been actually I think really good, and it was just well the fact that we actually got all the characters back, like the potential was there, and typical Disney ruined it. Mm-hmm. You know, because Disney sucks. Well, Disney's gonna own everything eventually, so either get with it or do something about it. So, uh, I guess I'll just be sent to the gulag and watch endless runs of Miss Marvel or something stupid. So, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, anyway, so to to really, I guess, heart, I'll make a hard transition into what we really want to talk about today because partially because there's not really too much more to talk about. Obviously it's been some time past since the road decision came down, but ultimately I'm glad we are talking about it. Cause obviously we recorded the night before the decision came down. We, I had said, I think that they're going to go ahead and vote to strike down Roe v. Wade and they should. And part of me was cautiously optimistic. Like I wouldn't have been surprised that Friday morning to see that they didn't sadly, because Kavanaugh has been known to not have a spine, and we saw that in the Remain in Mexico policy that happened today where he ruled in favor to get rid of it, which was – anyway. Um, and so for uh, for me, always, again, I've said this countless times on this show, and, we're, and, and again, ultimately what's funny about the Roe v. Wade decision coming down is now abortion is going to become a topic that is talked about actually more often instead of uh, – uh, uh, than as, as first – you know versus before because now because it's more of a localized issue it's going to be talked about more and more right because now it deals with your state reps your governor is going to be much more important when it comes to how abortion is handled it's weird how vocal our culture has become about such a sensitive topic this i mean it is the most divisive topic it is these people who are protesting and stuff it's almost like some of them are bragging about it that they're like I've done this. I've done this. Like I, it's my body. It's my choice. Blah blah mm-hmm. blah. This used to be something that was, it used to be a hard decision. Something that would like get people shamed out of their own families. Well, safe, legal, and rare was the was the line for the Democrats for a long time. I mean, how far did we fall? I mean, we've we say it time and time again on our show, but we gave an inch and they took a mile. Well, again, you know, it, it just goes back to the slippery slope idea, right? It, which the left calls a slippery slope fallacy, but it's been proven to be correct. 
Um, and basically everything that the – what's funny is everything that in the 90s that the Christian right said would happen kind of kind of ended up did happening. Uh, it did end up happening, excuse me. Um, but, but I was listening to Andrew Clavin. He's one of the Daily Wire commentators, and he had said – I think I, I may have mentioned this already before, but he had said that um, – the slippery slope started with with Roe v. Wade coming down because once you can justify a woman killing her baby, there's really not much left after that, right? And now we see, I think, the bigger ramifications now from that, whether it's Obergefell um, and different things uh, as far as Supreme Court decisions. But um, have you, know, you seen all the memes where like people are talking about like they show Arthur? Like the kids show Arthur? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And he's grabbing a coat hanger and they're like, women are just going to find another way. It's like, oh, kind of like guns. Well, yeah. What's funny again is, is the left is proving the point of why banning guns is actually a stupid idea. But that's neither in, here in nor there because they're not going to see it. <laughs> right? Yeah. But but I think you know what 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 people like don't understand is that a lot of what what caused Roe v. Wade to come to pass was was really built on a lie in a lot of ways because even the the woman that was Jane Roe never even had an abortion, ended up having the child and adopting the child well before the decision of Roe v. Wade even came down. And I think she's come out multiple times since then and saying, like, you know, I was basically used by Planned Parenthood and a lot of different things. And so, but this is the most monumental political moment in the last 50 years. I, no, it's for a me, big deal. For me, this is the biggest political event or biggest event uh, for our country since world war ii um Ooh, i mean i i know what's happened since then like 9-11 I mean, yeah, which was things, but, but that was had to do with things outside of our country that i guess you're really, saying just political right? yes yeah. politically um uh, i'm not too, i'm not even trying to i'm not downplaying the tragedy of of 9-11 uh of course but the reality is is that Roe Ro v. Wade was responsible for for over sixty million babies being dead up to this point, and so the decision of the or, or, or the decision of these these justices to to overturn Roe v. Wade is the most monumental thing that has happened to the United States since then, and it is the greatest victory of our lifetime. And for me. And I, I, I had done a, an Instagram story on that Friday morning when it had come down is that we have nobody but President Trump to to um, to thank for this because, because it is the justices yeah. that he appointed on the court that had this happen. And, and ultimately, the person that we should also thank is Harry Reid. People don't remember this guy, but Harry Reid was the Democratic uh, the Senate's the, the Senate leader for the Democrats back when Obama was in office. And they had killed the filibuster for Supreme Court nominees. You, used, you I, I believe you, you had to have a, 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 a filibuster-proof majority to get a justice passed. Okay. And they had gotten rid of the filibuster to make it where it's just a pure majority. You have 50, 50 plus one, it's going. And Mitch McConnell at the time, although Mitch McConnell has been a scumbag in a lot of ways since then, the one good thing Mitch McConnell has done is – helped president trump get these justices on the supreme court but he had said to harry reed at the time you will regret you, you will you will regret this sooner than you think you will and that was in 2016 right before president trump came into office and now uh six years later we are witnessing we witnessed roe v wade be overturned i mean this is textbook stuff people yeah this is well if the uh the deep state allows it to be. Then, well, th have you seen what they're thing. trying to put in textbooks and everything else? For, for, for even what? just Tomball ISD, where where our, my kid goes to school. They, well, I know that I know there was a a, a big blow up about the a, a, a science book. It was uh, a health book. A, a health book for, for Tomball. Tomball ISD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's they right. it and they pulled it out because it was again it was getting into like gender and non binary. Right, and all this like woke stuff again. And, again. In it a health matter. book, right, and again in Tomball ISD, right, which is a not only a highly rated uh, school district, but right. also f far from, you know, liberal Houston. Right. I mean, it's pretty right. removed, but it just goes to show that you, because, you were not safe. You because are of not its safe. constituents, they paid attention. They they went, they did the right thing. They didn't, you know, 
have a uh, summer of love event, but they <laughs> they did the, they went to the right channels and it got removed. Right, it's the little things. Right, absolutely. So so I actually the biggest the biggest thing that came from Roe v. Wade besides obviously the fact that now states, you know, have the the power which should be granted to them anyway. The mm-hmm. federal government had no authority to have this, but the, the states have now been granted the power to uh, decide how they want to go about abortion, uh, which is. A good step uh, again for me uh you know I, i've said many, plenty of times i am more than willing to to endorse a federal ban on abortion because i believe based on and not even on religious principles although those do apply just strictly on the constitution and the de- and the ideals of the united states that the, the the rights to life liberty and pursuit of happiness right the first one is the right to life and the human being has the right to to do that so but what i want to do is actually read a portion from Skoda's blog about the decision of uh, Roe v. Wade, because it's actually uh, huge. And this is from my hero, Clarence Thomas, uh, which is, I love him. Fanboy. So I, I, yeah, By the way, for those who don't know, we do have a Teespring account with quite a few good collections, one of which is your favorite. Yeah, it's, it's the a Clarence Thomas fan, fan club. Fan club. Uh, which I need, I need to get this shirt so I can, so I yeah, can uh, wrap it, on, wear the it on the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would wear it every time because Clarence Thomas is my favorite person in the country because i i believe he's the smartest man uh, uh politically i believe i believe he is he is the greatest justice on the supreme court and it will be a a uh, a, a sad day in the united states when this man passes away it's going to be a very sad day because he's a genius and it's be sad partially because half the country is willing to demonize him uh just for the fact that he's not willing to go along with typical left-wing ideas which we'll get into here in yeah, a little honestly, bit. Yeah, honestly we need more to stand up like that. Yes, yes, more Clarence Thomases, please. Uh and so but this is from his concurrence of it. Uh so this is from Scotus Bob, quote, but a concurrence opinion by Thomas indicates at least for him decisions like Griswold, Lawrence and Obergefell are very much in doubt. Thomas reiterated his view that the Constitution's due process clause only protects process the right to have the government uh, f- uh, follow proper procedures before taking away someone's life liberty or property the due process clause thomas road does not protect any substantive rights because the alito opinion concludes that there is no right to an abortion even under the supreme court's substance uh, substantive uh, due process clause excuse me ex- uh, thomas explains he joined the court's opinion but in a future case, he urges the court should reject substantive due process entirely and reconsider cases like Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergefell. So for those of y'all that don't know, Griswold versus Connecticut was, was a, uh, a case about, uh, I believe, married couples being able to have access to contraceptives. Lawrence v. Texas, I believe it was v. Texas, was about uh, same-sex relations, just out of marriage, just being able to to partake okay. and then obergefeld was the case in 2013 or 14 i think where to to basically federally legalize gay marriage and so clarence thomas's point is that it is fair to reevaluate those cases now again because for, what does the federal government have to do with something like that 100 percent correct and again the, the the substantive due process cl- clause which is just the stupidest idea any ever and i don't want to get into that because we can get bogged down into the legalese of that but when it comes to these decisions they were just poorly made which is clarence thomas's point and i think and me, i think that's why the left was afraid because if this domino falls what's next and i think they sh- i say they should be afraid granted i don't think Anyone else on the Supreme Court has the spine to to, to Other than, go after those yeah. besides Clarence Thomas? Even Alito, who Alito has been great, I don't think, he, I think he would, I think he agrees with Clarence Thomas. I don't think he has the spine to go after those sort of cases because, you know, and ultimately here's the thing. Obergefell, I think, absolutely has a chance to be put on the chopping block, which is not, which is I don't think is gonna for me. I think is a good thing. Uh, again, so people disagree, all kind of stuff. I think it's good. When it comes to Lawrence and and the Griswold case, even a lot of right wing individuals, especially with the contraceptive thing, are not going to get behind that. So I don't think there's going to be the cultural backing of that. Maybe maybe in maybe in fifty a hundred years when they have the, we have a a super conservative country, you know, if that happens, maybe that's the case. But I I, I just don't see that happening because even again, a lot of people on the right. 
uh, utilize contraceptive, although it's it's becoming less and less because of the what is seeming to be harmful consequences of uh, you know long term uses of hormonal birth control when it comes to women. Um, again, whether it's heightened um, uh, instances of depression. Things like that, where I mean, these 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 girls become uh, uh, clients I mean, of big pharma well, for, for be, a lifetime. Well, not to even be graphic, but just pe- people don't realize, like, one, those things typically take time to even take effect. You can't just get on birth control and like, boom, like good to go, depending on what it mm-hmm. is. But mm-hmm. once you've been on it for so long, you a woman doesn't start like menstruating and their cycle doesn't come back right away. Right. Like sometimes, like six months. Mm-hmm. Right to return right. to normal, like and during that time, it's like coming off, com- like coming down, like weaning off drugs. Right, like like an addict, like you almost need not quite rehab, but like people, the 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 mood swings, the the different. I, I've been through it personally, and it's 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 rough. Yeah, you know, and that and that's where I think we're why we're seeing even not really quote unquote conservative women trying to get off of that because they're watching these 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 negative side effects. And I think we're going to find sooner than we think, you know, as far as down the road, how the 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 mass medication of young girls into being young women was really, really a bad thing. Because I know a lot of girls, especially growing up, oh, who you know, thirteen, girls, fourteen huh? years you womanizer. Okay, take it easy. You know, ladies, he's got a minivan. You watch out. <laughs> I'm also married with three kids. They see so right? you Leave rolling. Me alone. Whatever. Um, so. <laughs> That's my job to get you off your train of thought. It, 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 well, it worked as so, you were. But, <laughs> Where were you? I was. Oh yeah, yeah. So, what? Well, you know, I think I think any of us know mm-hmm. most of the girls that we grew up with, right? You know, go, went to school at went to school with, you know, around 13 or 14, they're being good. They're going on the pill. Yeah. And whether it's me, over precautious, over cautious parents, right. Right. Or the girls, you know, convincing their parents, like, because, and more than that, it's the parents that are doing it. I think probably, uh, and along with their pediatrician, which is, which is silly, but instead of just saying, Hey, you know, don't have sex with someone that you don't want to marry. Wild concept, I know. It's, it's not very, that easy, okay? I, I know, right? I mean, just God forbid, you know, you know, you know. I wonder what would happen. Yeah, right. Just, oh uh, yeah, I wonder what. They would haven't be like taken if we... sex ed yet. You know, it was yeah. only fifth grade, so. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And so, so, for me, and it, I haven't had this realization until recently. Listening to different resources and actually listening to women with thinking about, you know. A girl being on hormonal birth control for for ten years, because again, if she's thirteen or fourteen, she's going to be on them at least a decade before she probably gets married. You cannot tell me that there's going to be some sort of negative consequence. What I'm not sure, you know, I'm not I'm not going to make any sort of claim, but you can't tell me there can't be some sort of negative consequence from that happening. That just makes no sense. They're going to chemically alter your hormones that are supposed well, to function in a natural way. Well, there's other there's other methods, but even then, we don't. I mean. Like even UIDs, for example, mm-hmm. like like Marina or anything else. Like, have you ever watched all the uh, like the symptoms? Or like, don't do, don't try Marina if you're if you start experiencing you know side right. effects. Well, UIDs are, a, are scary. Because I actually had this coworker a, a while a, a few years ago who uh, is that is UED the one that goes in your arm or whatever? No, so the one that I'm familiar with uh, actually gets injected up there. Uh. It's kind of like a giant straw, and it just pops out. It's, it looks like a slingshot, oh, but it wedges yeah. itself up there oh, yeah. and oh, tricks yeah, yeah, your yeah. body into think that there's a an egg being fertilized, so it just stops menstruating. But obviously, it's not a real egg. Right. And the benefit to you, that, unlike what you're referring to as the hormonal version, you take a pill you know, once but a week But I feel like even that, that, that's not normal, right? That's it's, not normal. You're, you're tricking your body. Yeah. And nothing's ever good. I mean, people want to complain, you know um, – PETA and all that about what we're doing with the the dairy cows and how we we pump them full of estrogen so they're always like milking you know like even if they didn't just mm-hmm. give birth yeah, they're yeah. always well what about the cows that's not that's not humane that's not normal neither is what you're doing to yourself right like right. just to prevent ha- you know getting a kid out of wedlock or uh, you know when you're not ready but right they don't right. understand so the one I'm familiar with there's 
like lots of issues, first of all. But yeah, it's as far as the hormonal imbalance side, it's zero to like practically very little dose of hormone. And it can stay up there like three to five years. Right. But, again, but the just, problem is scarring, tissue growing around it. There's right. all kinds of other issues. Again, we're doing something unnatural. Exactly Science. right. But again, like what I was thinking about a like, coworker, like it was the one that goes in the arm again. I don't know what it's called, but you know, sorry, whatever. That one's had a lot of problems. Well, she was talking about how she had a seizure because they like hit some nerve or something incorrectly. And so she like started like, I'm like, how about just don't have sex well, with the, someone unless you're married. But then you always get that bump there too. Ugh, so, it's like ugh, the, uh, so unnatural. Like, I don't want to say third world countries, but like Venezuela and different ones I know, like the immunizations that they used to have to do and stuff, yeah. you'd have a like a permanent bump or not yeah, from that. Not and then good. like there were issues and fallouts from that. Like not good. there's a lot that we look back on in history and realize how did nobody say anything or we didn't know at the time, but yeah. I wish we would have. We could be living in that moment now. And the sad oh, fact we is are for sure. history yeah. repeats itself. Yes. We can yeah. learn from these mistakes. Yeah. And the fact that we went from two weeks to flatten the curve to <laughs> take my rights away with the uh, the whole the whole vid vax and everything else and yeah. these yeah, experimental yeah, yeah. things. I mean, yeah. we don't. Wait, know. What's funny about that is there's a there was a I saw a a picture of a tweet that it was a it was a my body it was a it was a <laughs> my body my, my choice it was a my body my choice like uh, protest but then at the bottom it said. You need to show proof of vaccination. <laughs> it's like y'all don't even realize how stupid you are. And again, you tell you're showing us that you don't care about bodily autonomy. That's not the argument you're making. No, That's not what you it's care about, about. It's it's about power. When and control. I say and what I say, agree with that. Correct. But don't check me for it, mm -hmm. and don't even if one thing contradicts another, a point of mine. Don't bring it up. Right. And so what's funny about this is it, this actually goes – I'm just – we're going to go into our next phase is, is so when after Roe came down, we we had the left's response, which we're still dealing with. And it's it's just so amazing how – Like they're just narr – like, it's funny. Well, for, Okay. So I'm going to first put, go into this. Okay. So the first most egregious res response to the Roe v. Wade there it was, was it, – it's got to make an appearance, right? Was – the response to Clarence Thomas personally for this. And I take this extremely personally. You see, I thought black people couldn't be racist. Well, I remember explicitly being told only white people can be racist. Well, that's unless you're conservative. <laughs> Apparently, if you're black then and conservative, you're a, well, you're, a, you're a black white supremacist, which makes no sense. But here's here's the thing is what's what was is also beautiful about clarence thomas is that he 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 reveals who the left is because i saw several piece, uh, pictures and actual tweets of left wing individuals that actually used the n-word in the in the derogatory er ending and talking about clarence thomas and for me i'm like you are just showing us that this is how you felt Always, the left what is has always been racist. Are there racist individuals on the far right? Yes, and they're evil and they're terrible and they're stupid. Yeah, but they have no institutional power. The problem is, is when it comes to the left, they have institutional power, and so people feel privileged, especially white liberals, feel privileged enough to be able to say this derogatory, racist thing towards Clarence Thomas because they don't think they're going to get any sort of backlash. Luckily, several of them are actually. Uh, 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 suspended from Twitter, which I'm I am shocked that Twitter actually suspended these people. And I say shocked because they're very left wing, and Twitter usually never bans or suspends anyone left wing. Well, it's funny that they they bring up the racist word. I mean, we've had the justices now are are more diverse than ever before. Yes, if you look at the the panel that initially enacted Roe vs. Wade, it's nothing about old it's white nine men. white dudes. That's it, right? And it, and that's what that's also funny. It's like you know, men have no business to to uh, uh, make laws about women's bodies. Oh, it was but, nine oh, really? white dudes that did it initially. So you're lying. You also got to wonder you're why lying. they did it in the first place, too. I mean, there's a whole argument to made about you know, keeping you know the the minorities their numbers down, like Planned Parenthood. Yes, a whole different. Absolutely, Planned Parenthood was founded by Margaret Sanger, who was a eugenicist and racist, who who uh. uh was had a actual relationship with Adolf Hitler, okay, and she, her goal with Planned Parenthood 
was to, to get rid of the undesirables, which was disabled individuals, blacks, Latinos, anyone who wasn't white. She spoke to the KKK, and it just that's that is where you again. And people will say, well, you know, people that are involved with Planned Parenthood aren't like that now. It doesn't matter. They are actively contributing to the legacy that Margaret Sanger started. Period. Well, I mean, look at where period. all these Planned Parenthoods pop up. You want to talk about, okay, up-to-do, white neighborhood, if you want to even throw a label on it. But, you know, middle middle income, well-to-do, they typically don't have the little accidents. If, and if they do, it's a pleasant surprise. It's a blessing or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, honey, look, it's a it's a boy, whatever. It's the ones, you know, that are impoverished. It's minorities in inner city. Right. So that's where these Planned Parenthood is popping up. Absolutely. You think it's just that's a coincidence? Right. Yeah, and they, yeah, they it, argue that, yeah. oh, well, these people, they need they need the resources if they because they, they can't because they don't have enough money or, you know, it's it's not a good childhood you know environment to, to raise kids. Those are all excuses just to put it there. Absolutely, a hundred percent, and you're absolutely right. Because the biggest plan. Why do you think most of the time they're free or state funded? That, that's right. Well, and also, where is the biggest Planned Parenthood in the city of Houston in the Third Ward, which is a, mon- a majority black neighborhood? Is that a, is that a mistake? No, it is not. That is not, a, and it also happens to be next to the University of Houston. That's where they like. They like to be next to college campuses and minority neighborhoods. That's always where they are. Period. End of sentence. They want college girls to 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 renounce anything about them that is feminine by going in and killing their own child, and they want to make sure that black people do not populate, right? Because here's the reality. Black people are consistently 13% of the population in the United States. How is that possible? That makes no sense except for the fact that Margaret Sanger's goal to limit and shrink the black uh, population is working. Hey, you it know is what? working. I'm going to say something, and I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. But if you're so open to killing something because it's not you're not ready or it was unexpected or even let's just say it's it's related to like to like even even if it was the worst case scenario and something happened just get your tubes tied i mean if you're if you're that extreme that you think that you can destroy life no matter how you view it fetus baby whatever you know you that's reversible they can do that inpatient or outpatient, whatever they, whatever is you. Uh, no, no, that's vasectomy is reversible. So t- t- tying your tubes not that no. one's permanent. No, tie your t- if you tie your tubes, it's. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, then I am misinformed. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was. Dude. It's virtually impossible to reverse that process. I'm almost positive. I could be wrong, but one I'm of us is positive. wrong. But vasectomies are reversible. Are reversible. Most. Of the I time. did know that they are, but it's, there are I've cases it's where they don't. I've heard it's painful. Don't give vasectomies, guys. I, I've looked into it. If you're a guy, don't do it. You have no. You, Apparently, once that, that that line severed, if you ever want to reconnect it, you've got to like grab it and stretch it back yeah. out. So it can... Don't do it. So, but in, not only that. What's so what was so crazy, right? Is it, it, you know again going back to the the Clarence Thomas point is that they were talking about you know they're gonna now it, this is the the point where they're gonna start reversing all these things and also including Lovings v. Virginia. And I take this actually very personally because I am in a mixed race marriage okay. and I have mixed race kids. And Lovings v. Virginia was a case where obviously it, it, it stopped the outlawing of, of mixed race marriages, you know, which is a big deal for me because for me personally, I'm very grateful to live in a country where that's that's is something that is OK, because there was a there was a time in the United States where a mixed race uh, uh, marriage was was illegal. You literally were 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 a, a criminal if you were to do that, and that was a dark time in the United States, and that was sad. And luckily, we had, we have made such strides that that's not a problem, right? Where we are free to actually marry someone no matter the, the color of their skin. And the idea the idea that this is going to put us on the path to ending that was just the most disgusting. And I actually got into an argument with someone on Instagram, that someone I knew about this. And I usually don't get into these back and forth because they're usually very it's not fruitless. Worth it, yeah. But that is a very personal thing to me, and this is why. It's also why I'm very much against CRT and the and the racial identitarianism that is popping up on, mostly on the left because that's more mainstream, but it is also on the far right because it's dangerous to me and my family. It's dangerous to my children who are mixed race kids who, in this, if we go down this ident- racial identitarian path, 
will be let will be will be pushed to the side and demonized because they're they are seen as as not pure blood either whether it's from the left wing perspective or the right wing perspective of racial identitarianism and the reality is is that ultimately either either way is evil and so i i take it i take that part very per obviously because it affects me personally mm -hmm. so i take it very personally and the idea that people are talking about that because clarence thomas's wife is is a white woman pisses me off nothing it, it makes me so angry it makes me so angry because it's disgusting and it's rooted in racism it's rooted in racism whether they whether they they and this person happened to be not white um and you know i'm not gonna say he's racist because that's that's a that's a that's a very serious charge to give someone but that is an a that is a racist idea to to say oh we're on our way to 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 to, to striking down Loving you for Virginia because this was such a huge precedent that was set. It is not the same. It's okay. very different. One is about equality and race and mm -hmm. marrying. Who, I mean, you were going back to what Clarence Thomas was saying before about I don't know if it was the loving. No, you were just talking about loving. But which is the uh, the Lawrence? Is that the one about the same sex marriage? Uh, uh it was. Uh, no, Obergefell is the same sex marriage. Uh, okay. a federal a federal same sex. Marriage. But again, yeah. Even that one's a stretch, and we were both saying that that one yeah. is pretty hard. To your to your point, I think that's a bit extreme to say that we're going to go that far backwards because, again, that is backwards. The main point about Roe vs. Wade is a lot of people view that as killing innocent life. Correct, right. The other one's about equality. We're yeah. not making anybody unequal here. No. We're bringing it to a state level where the states can decide and your voice matters more. I mean, if you don't... I mean, if you honestly think that, you know, it's just a fetus, then, then tr you know, have your, we've talked, I mean, it's in our notes, it's all over the place. Work at a company that's going to pay for your travel expenses so you can go across state Oof, lines and man, take care of it. Yeah, we're going to get into that, yeah. I mean, but to to the person you got into that argument with, to go that far, I don't know how you can say it's not racist. I mean, that's pretty. <laughs> I mean, again, I mean, I'm, they I'm very, are literally bringing race into it, right? And again, I, you know, but at, at the end of the day, this is a, this is someone who lives in in New York, right? Is in, which is the the one of the most liberal places, right? So I I, I don't expect anything less, right? But they can't but, go get coffee without getting filled with ideas, right? But here's the thing: is that what this reveals is, is the way the left views this, and 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 again, they're not sugarcoating. It. And this word goes to actually the next thing I, I wanted to make sure we talked about was was. Uh, Anna Navarro's, who uh, is the the Republican correspondent um, of CNN, so she was during their coverage of of the Supreme Court's decision, she was going on this diatribe of of her uh, of using her own uh, re uh, relatives uh, with special needs as a reason why she thinks abortion is necessary, right? And this is just incredible, right? So, so, so that's like let's put them down, just right. Because. So, so she uses. These these uh, what does she say? She describes as uh, you know very autistic you know and and, and uh, one family member that's very autistic one is down one has Down syndrome, and she talks about how hard it is for their parents and so she uses this as a reason why we need to have abortion, which was just it, it, again it's asinine it's it, crazy well it's eugenics right we, 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 the reality is is that a lot of this has to do again with the eugenics uh, 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 origin of abortion right the desire the, the wanting to get rid of the undesirables right yes. which is very scary because even places like I, I think it's it's um the netherlands one of the nordic countries brags we've we've eradicated uh, uh down uh, you know down syndrome and autism it's because they 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 abort the children that come back that have, they snap that, that have out tested the for that yeah, it, 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 which is just wild to me, right? It, it, it's absolutely wild, right? But, but, but the the fact that she would use this, use that as a reason why she th still thinks abortion is is something that is needed. That that basically because well, what is, she is saying is her own family members should have been should have aborted their children, but she's because they had for them too. Them. I'd like to hear from her parents on if they could have done it again or would have known if they would have done something differently, because we both know people personally. You know, I've my grandparents have fostered a bunch, dozens of kids with special needs. Like, just the fact that you can look at somebody like that and and, and think, just because they have a disability or just because it's a burden or harder on the state or other people who mm -hmm. are volunteering or if it's your parents, their their own parents, I should say, 
you chose to bring this child in, into the world. God chose to let the child, you know, survive childbirth and mm -hmm. everything. I think it's kind of out of your control. And if you think that you are some judge, jury, and executioner that you can decide, oh, you know, my personal experience with it is every single child we've had and we're expecting our third and this one got asked again and me and my wife had the same discussion leading up to it about genetics testing. Nope. It's not covered under insurance because it's extra. <laughs> right. And you wonder why yeah. it's extra. It's because, oh, well, we can find out if they're going to have, you know, mental disorders or any kind of like diseases or why. Yeah. I told my wife, she's, she's like, why? If you want to do it? We'll just be good to know. And I'm like, why? Yeah. She's like, well, I don't know. I'm like, yeah. one, I don't feel like paying for something that we've got no <laughs> yeah. control over. The practical, right? Yeah. The practical reason, right? Because yeah. no matter what they're going to tell me, let's just say my, my I'm going to find out that early, early that my child is going to have down syndrome. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change my personal right. belief that I'm going to bring this child into right. the world. It's not fair to that child. I mean, the fact that she, the Navarro was even talking about, you know, with her, her own experience with down syndrome and family members and stuff disabled. It's like, she was talking about how, what her one's very autistic, like, People uh, like just follow on like TikTok. People will see these videos of like a, a dog that's got like a back disorder and can barely walk funny or a little dog that's in a little wheelchair. And they're like, you know, this dog was was dying. Somebody abandoned it. And then we all jumped in and raised fifteen thousand dollars and got it a special little wheelchair. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People care more about animals. And I'm an animal person, too. I, I care. Bleeding heart. But I think that's with everything, including human children, babies. Right, yeah. But they draw this line on what they call is a fetus versus a baby. It's, right, yeah. I don't know. No, I, I, it just it, it, it just shows the perverted viewpoint they have on, on human life. And I, you know where it stems from, I don't know. But, but for me... College. It, it, well, yes. <laughs> but eh? it, 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 it... This weird disconnect that, that the left seems to have about human life is just so so bizarre to me because for me there is no greater thing of value than the human person i'm sorry there there is no tree but there is no animal that, that that is more important than a human being and and the the reality is for certain circles that's a radical idea which is just blows my mind because this is the no same sense. group that and a lot of times no offense can't have children no, that's right. Yeah. I mean, this is the same group that is they're, they're calling calling them birthing feeders. I mean, bir birthing people in chest feeders. Right. I mean, and they're worried about that. I mean, and they don't know what a woman is. They right. can't define it. Yeah, I know. Well, and that was one of the funniest things is, is, is I saw an article that said uh, the Roe v. Wade decision affects the LGBT uh, community more uh, in, a, in a major way. And I'm like, please explain to me how abortion affects a lesbian or gay couple you're gonna have to really work hard to explain to me how two gay guys going at it are gonna really be affected by the fact that a woman cannot kill her own child you gotta you have to really i, I explain to me because i'm having some sort of disconnect there i'm sorry right or 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 if we, we want to go to the next level for for a trans That's individual trans if, if a trans individual who is who is mutilated and destroyed their body. Please explain to me how their now sterilized body is going to be affected by the Roe v. Wade decision. I, you're gonna have to really stretch that for me, right? But it's the same thing. But it, it, it's gonna be the same people that I guess wrote the Baymax uh, 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 kids show, where where a man uh, uh, can menstruate apparently because. You're, I don't. I don't understand that. You're gonna have to explain that to me because it makes no sense based I on the biology. I guess we'll watch and find out. I don't know, <laughs> or not watch at all. <laughs> so. You know, I may want to at least just watch a clip of that just to be like, what, like WTF? First off, why are you talking about a a, a woman's menstrual cycle on a kids' TV show? So it makes no sense. Okay, I don't know if your kids have watched it, but there's of course this not. Net, no, course no, no, no. There's this Netflix show. Oh, okay. What called Troll Hunters? I've heard of it, but they haven't watched it now. There's like a series. They've got like two movies. One came out in like 18 or 19. It was like this bigger production movie. Okay. okay. It's like they have like a show called like Troll Hunters Acadia. Then they have this bigger one where it's like a whole bunch of people come together, aliens and these troll hunters. It's pretty cool. Okay. There's a joke in it 
where one of the characters, his alien girlfriend comes back. Okay. And they're on the superhero team, and he's okay. so excited to see her that he kisses her. Okay. And she's like, wait, wait, don't. And he, like, kisses her. And he's like, what? I thought you'd be excited to see me. And she's like, if my calculations are correct, that's our seventh kiss. And he was like, so? What's wrong with that? And he's like a human male. Yeah. And she's like, where I come from, our species, after seven kisses, you know, a, a baby starts to grow, is what she says. <laughs> and he... His first reaction is like, oh, my God, that's great. You're like, I'm so excited to be a dad. She's like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's the male species that gets pregnant. <laughs> so in a way, and I was explaining to my wife, I'm like, you, do you know what's happening? Because I've seen this with the kids kind of on and off, uh-huh. and I'm aware of it. My wife was oblivious. She turns it on sometimes and doesn't even know. And I pointed out to her, I'm like, but they're not so woke with it. It's more of a joke. But then they make the dad, the, 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 the I guess the... 16 year old boy or whatever this cartoon boy's age is who's yeah. pregnant which is a whole nother issue and kind of weird <laughs> yeah uh, go through pregnancy and he's having like where he's the emotional one and he's experiencing cramping and at the end he's got to like go through labor it was kind of funny but it's kind of pre-woke and it was kind of like you know, you know funny the baymax thing however though that's that, that's completely different in my opinion well, what's fun what's so cringe about the baymax thing too is that like if you haven't seen the clip, you can find it on, you know, because it was leaked. Instagram. Apparently, yeah, it was leaked. Yeah, because uh, Christopher Rufo again, the guy that has found a lot of the stuff. He was a CRT guy. He's, he's done a lot of great uh, investigative journalism. journalism. Yeah. Uh, what's so cringy about? So the, apparently, the, the, there's some there's some people inside Disney. Who oh, they're are still they're just silent. Again, they're all over the place, right? They're it's it's they they, they see this stuff and they're like, this is crazy. This is not this is not normal. What's so cringe about it though is like the guy in the clip of the Baymax series that says like, "Oh, these are the ones I like," which is so stupid. But because he's just he buying has, tampons, but, right? Yeah, but he has a trans flag as his shirt. I'm like, can you be any more cringe and obvious, Disney? Wow, y'all are so bad at this. Um, but this is why corporate left wing stuff is actually becoming really cringy and like. What happened to Disney being timeless? I got my daughter into Beauty and the Beast a couple weeks ago, about a month ago now, because leading up to her party, and it wasn't even really planned, but we had like a daddy-daughter day. Like my wife was either out or sleeping in or something. It was just me and her in the early yeah. Saturday morning. Yeah. And I turned it on. She's like, what's this? And then my son happened to come down, and he's like so into his like little iPad, playing his games and race cars and stuff that <laughs> he wasn't really. And I said, I'm like, sit down and watch this. And I took his iPad away, and he kind of got upset at first. And I was like, this is a movie about – and I kind of like hyped it up, the whole kind of mm-hmm. plot. And then they sat through and watched the whole thing. My daughter watches it three times a day now. Yeah. But the, my point is – I well, one, I finally got her off the Frozen kick because Frozen's the – it's brainwasher generation of daughters, <laughs> well, first of all. Yeah. No, nothing wrong with Frozen so far. Empowering for women, all that. But it's – my point is classic. It's timelessness. Yes. Disney was always timeless. Yeah. Watching a skit or a series now with a trans flag, I don't think is going to age as well as people think. It's going to age very badly. We're going to watch that in cringe, yeah. like you were saying. Cringe. Yeah. It's it's cringy now. Imagine how it's going to be 20 years from now. I mean, I don't think human rights is going to get worse. If anything, it's it better. But the way we're going about it now is not helping anything. Right. You're marginalizing another group just for for your group's opinion, right? Well, again, I w- w- what's so interesting about what you're saying too is that this is why you know for me, you're saying you know Disney used to be timeless. The current executives at Disney clearly hate the who they actually are, as far as as where they where they come from and 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 the tradition that they have because. At the end of the day, for many of the Disney classics, they uphold traditional ideas of, of femininity and masculinity, and they they just reject that. Whether it's Beauty and the Beast or The Little Mermaid or uh, Beauty and the Beast or, or uh, uh, a Sleeping Beauty, excuse me. Oh, so you said that twice. Uh, yeah, right. It's or, or Snow White is they 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 edify the ideas of masculinity and femininity, right? Because here's the thing: is that even when because like one movie that uh lila really likes is actually little mermaid Mm -hmm. she really likes it a lot actually and 
you know, so Eli will watch it, so you know, because Lila will pick, and so you know, because they take turns picking what you know what movie they'll watch, and and so you know at the parts where like the the uh, what's his name Eric, I think it's Prince Eric, whatever, and Ariel. You know, she was like fifteen, sixteen, or whatever in that movie. Whatever, but sure. Again, different time. Right? Love is love, people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's not, yeah, that's not going that route. But, but. <laughs> But what you no, know I when it comes, but I I try to make sure that even like again in a movie that's maybe more geared towards girls, it's going to get uh, that Eli can get a message out of it. And what I tell him is, you know, because at the end, Eric, although he's human, he goes through these, he's very heroic, right, in the attempt to to stop the villain, right? What, what, when he forced her to change. Not when he forced her to change. He could have lived with her. He could have been a burn man, but no, she had to live with him. Well, it's very sexist. Well, you know, was ultimately mis- the man misogynistic says misogynistic or whatever. It is misogynistic, but you know what? The man makes the rules. So, <laughs> in this house, that's right. No, but this is a nuclear but, family. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, but Eric and is uh, being human. He just does what he can, right? And it, to be heroic, and I and I and so in those moments, I will tell like Eli. I have actually said like Eli, you see what he's doing. He's mm-hmm. doing. He's sacri- He's going to do what he can to help and defeat defeat the the the, the villain. I said that's what you're supposed to do. I said you're supposed to step up and do what's right. And so I was like, well, why are you talking to a four year old that way? I'm like, I don't care how old he is. He's gonna hear. He's gonna hear. Either he this hears is what, from you or he's gonna hear from somebody. That's else. That's right. And he's gonna hear from me that your job is to step up and be the protector. Your job is to do what is necessary when it's when 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 these moments are asked of you. It's it's for you to step up and do what's right. And and, and that's what's great about again those classic films is that. They tell they you, values, right? Again, morals. Sleeping Beauty. What does it say? Like, yes, she, that Prince Charming or whatever his name is in that movie, he's going to, you know, Prince Charming was, I think Cinderella. Was whatever, it. right? The prince in 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 Sleeping Beauty, right? He's going to do, face the dragon. He's going to face his enemy, right, and defeat the dragon, mm-hmm. right, in pursuit of protecting and going after the princess, right? These are built into our psyche they're built into the core of who we are that's why that they are still relevant 60 70 years later and why like you said the baymax series of stupidity with this weird gender idea is going to die a quick painful death because it's not timeless it makes no sense it goes against everything that we are it's an agenda and they're trying to pump it down your throats change the youth again it's, it goes back to this this deconstruction of masculinity mm-hmm. and femininity, which we'll get into. It's you like kind a re-education of alluded to, movement. Right, and you've alluded to with the company thing, and we'll get to that. But first is we're going to get to the first idea of, of dismantling femininity, right, because feminism is actually misogyny uh, um, um, in disguise, right? and I'll get to that in a minute. Is So th- th- this is the, the great response from the, the, the shrieking feminists of, of Twitter. Is uh, This is from uh, the Daily Mail. She decides – Women go on national sex strike in protest at uh, at SCOTUS overturning of Roe v. Wade as pro-choice marches continue across America and rioters in, in Portland go on a rampage. But that's kind of, you know, a regular Tuesday uh, in Portland nowadays. So this was really great because – Do they think that's going to work? Well, for me, my thing is I think it's t- so based. I mean, uh, women, uh, ladies, like- go for it. <laughs> Abstinence is actually a good idea. Hey, I agree with you. You're the people we don't want <laughs> – Having babies, anyways. <laughs> That's actually in partially fact, true. your partner most of the time is. Where do I start? Well, the, the, their partner I can't even is probably pick the pronouns. You know, I can't. Well, their prob- their partner is probably a beta whose testosterone level is so low that their sperm doesn't have the ability to actually impregnate or them in, a, that, in the first place. Right? Or they're Excuse a trans my. woman or anything <laughs> well, else. Like that's a good point. But, but actually, that 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 adds to my point of mm-hmm. you shouldn't worry because your partner even if they are biologically a man uh probably can't get you pregnant anyway because their t levels are so low that it's literally impossible so you shouldn't be too worried but what's so funny about this is i saw this i, I quoted this one tweet because it was just so funny it, so it, it's quote wimixin because that's 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 actually how you pronounce it and i'll, I'll get back to this in a second calling for a national sex strike no sex with men until women's rights are codified by law, hashtag all men, hashtag under his eye, which is a stupid Handmaid's Tale reference. So wh- I, I I pulled this tweet because of, of the use of Wimixin because it is similar to the Latin X idea, right? Because women – w- what's funny about this tweet also is because this this actual 
trend actually fell out of favor because it was uh, uh, transphobic, which is really funny. But so Wimixin came around the same time as Latin X. I'm surprised you didn't say Wimix. <laughs> so what's funny about it is, that, of course, is that when you have women, right, it spells men at the end of it technically, right? And so to get rid of that, they put an X instead of E. Just like with Latino or Latina, they just put an X to get rid of gender. And it's just – it's just – when you read that, it's like you're so silly. I can't take you seriously because you can't use words properly. English is hard. They've always said it's one of the hardest languages to learn. Well, it's a lot harder when you start changing letters around, right? <laughs> just – Oh my no god. No sex with men until women's <laughs> rights are codified by law. Hashtag all men. Hashtag under his eye. Don't forget that. Yeah. Which is just, which if y'all don't know, that is from uh, Handmaid's Tale. How which far did you get? You got pretty far in the show. We, right? we watched it. We, we watched all the seasons I that think are we're available. We're only through season two or something. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty decent series. But what's so funny about that is. It's so far removed. Do they really think that that's going to happen? It's. <laughs> I'd be more worried if they had their way that something like that would happen. <laughs> Again, we're trying to keep the culture. Like, What's funny about the show that's actually kind of interesting is that because contraceptives have gotten so out of hand that birth rates are, are so low that they're forced <laughs> to do that because women are becoming infertile. Yeah. And that's why these women become handmaids is because they're actually fertile. And so it's like. What is your point? Yeah, I it's don't like, know what you're. Yeah, it's it's funny hashtag because under his eye. You mean the same contraceptives that we were talking about that we don't know the long term effects, you know, or actually in, in a lot of ways we do because of the the hormonal imbalance, the scarring, the with the UIDs we already talked about, like higher rates of of of, of uh, uh, psychological issues. Higher that 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 is, I don't want to say it's correlated, but it's. It's pretty closely correlated with 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 the use of, of of early, especially early birth control. A lot of different depression, getting off things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And and so for me, I would be more concerned for a leftist regime to institute a handmade sale more than a right wing one because, <laughs> because it probably would be the left to do something. It, so it extreme. would because they would be so concerned about low, like low, low birth rates. Two weeks to flatten the curve. Well, it's even like the 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 one child China policy we talked about a few months ago, uh, yeah. almost in February, I think now, where they're now telling people you need to have three kids because we're so desperate to have people. Yeah, they, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna be shocked if in a year or so they enact such an extreme policy that they don't understand the long term repercussions. And right. Then they yeah, have yeah. to Like they're they're literally on a sinking ship, and they're like, okay, everybody. Start bailing water, like because right. It's like it's well, all we're almost back. we're almost totally sunk. I don't think it's gonna matter <laughs> anymore. It's at like this yeah, point. at this point, just let the band play and we'll all go down. Dancing. Yeah, just let just yeah, just just let this let, let this sh uh, shit finally sink. But but what's so funny about this is the people that are proclaiming the sex strike are are just are just ugly and. You're not gonna have sex with anyone in general anyway. I don't know what the problem is. Again, you might be I, a little biased. I am because I have a very attractive conservative wife. The ones so. that we see in the media who are the loudest and proudest, they may not be the representatives of all the movement. They may just be the sure. majority, and the majority are ugly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But here's the thing. I think it's great. Oh, did you see the one about the uh, – her name's – I forget what it is. The Full House actress, Jody something. She was at one of the uh, the protests. Mm -hmm. And apparently some of the police like shoved her because she was up against the police line and she fell down. Oh, I did. I, oh, I, I didn't know she was from Full House, but I see, I see that clip. Uh, yeah. that clip because, yeah. you know, she had a bullhorn and everything. Well, yeah. F around to find out. Right. I mean, apparently for people who are watching, she was trying to tell people to get off the highway. But the part that's no, recorded the, looks like she was that's she was with the pushing protesters. The and what, what was so ironic about that, what was ironic about the bigger the bigger protests across the country, is there in places like L.A. and New York, abortion's legal up to nine months. I'm not sure what you're concerned about. I mean, you're, you're in the, the satanic— Again, it comes back to education and people not being well, yeah, educated. Yes, yes. Like, what's funny is what Gavin, Newsom, Gavin Newsom came up and tweeted— you know, abortion's not going anywhere. We're going to protect the rights of women in California. He doesn't have to protect them. They're already there. Just right. But, but keep but doing your job and you're good. California will do the rest. Like, right. California right. will take care of California. Yeah. Like, you're going to continue to be the satanic death cult worshiping state. Go ahead. Yeah. You know? What's that? What's that weird? Uh, 
like all the the high ups. Illuminati or whatever. No, it's the the one that where they worship the owl statue. You know what I'm talking about? Is that? Oh, what is that? They have that weird camp once a year where they get out there. Oh, dang it. What's it called? Oh, no. Dang it. Like presidents, oh, CEOs. Oh, 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 um. oh, dang it. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, what is it but called? Anyways, I think that's like that's California for you, man. That's. Oh, dang, I can't remember. Something. Bohemian Grove. That's what it's, what it is. Yeah, it's You're Bohemian right. Grove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you got to love Alex, Alex Jones. Anyways, so, so, but, um, but that's just the funny thing is that you have these in these giant left wing cities or, or left wing states. Well, again, there's no such thing as a uh, as a blue state. It's only blue cities, like we've said. But it's true in places like California, and New York. It's like ab- y'all have abortion up to nine months. I'm not sure what you're, uh, you know, protesting about. Now, again, you're not gonna well, have sex funniest- with anyone because y'all are horrifying looking, but. Well, the funniest videos are the ones that when people, they're like low-key conservative, but they act neutral, and they'll just ask kind of simple questions to people on the street, like oh, those are the best. Beach I love the man on the like street. Like that, and they're just like, uh, who won the Civil War? Yeah, they're like, uh, uh the U.S. Yes. I'm like, well, who was in the Civil War? Britain and the Britain U.S. And the, it's like, oh my and it's god, like, you are idiots. Yeah. These are the same people that are upset over all this. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, low other in, countries, low information voters, low information. This is why, and it's also why other the countries Democrats are laughing at us. Oh, because absolutely. This is this the current state of the youth. This is where we're heading. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, again, it's just it, it's just low. This is why Democrats push for things like also sixteen year sixteen year olds being able to vote is low information voters. You get them emotionally, and you're good to go. The same people who. You know, a five-year-old wants to play with a five-year-old boy, for example, wants to play with dolls and like, ooh, these are signs. These right, are signs exactly. It's like he clearly needs Let's to have Let's go his... get him on on hormones now. Exactly, right. We have to socially transition him. We have to give him a different name, right? Uh, it, it's just, it's just crazy, right? It's it's why that like again a few months ago or a few weeks ago, excuse me, with that Fox News uh, uh, segment with that trans uh, uh, um, child, right? They said she was showing signs uh, before she could speak. It's like, that makes no sense. You're an idiot. You're bad parents. You are groomers. She can't even tell you. And even if she could, you're really going to believe a child? Yeah, you're going to. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's like so it, but also that's, that goes back to also the gun thing. It's like, so a five-year-old can tell you what gender they are, but a 20, uh, 18-year-old isn't ready to buy, purchase a firearm? You're going to have to explain that to me. That, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but you nothing know. makes sense. No, it doesn't. So, but yeah. So the, the the sex strike thing again is just funny because it's just usually fat left wing discussing <laughs> yes. women that are screaming. It's like, well, don't worry about it. Like we weren't gonna have sex. We weren't gonna have sex. We've used anyway. the clip a lot of times. You know the one in the in the neon vest just screaming in the street. Oh yeah, with the beanie, yeah. the glasses. Yeah, it's it's them. Yeah, it's, it's her. And it's like, don't worry. No one wants to have sex with you anyway because you are not a a a a, a suitable mate. But what was the most funny thing from this as well is that you know you had these companies start coming out mm-hmm. and saying don't worry we're going to to pay for travel expenses to to take care of your abortions right yeah. so it was amazon we'll put you up in a Apple. nice hotel we'll pay yeah. for you to get there we'll be back in a couple of days no biggie you know why it's cheaper than maternity leave oh absolutely so this capitalism is, wins again yeah I, I, you gotta love capitalism baby right you're we, yeah <laughs> your enemy as the left, capitalism <laughs> pulled one over on you, and you're like, mm-hmm. "Yay, uh, Google uh, loves me." Absolutely, like, they rather uh, you butcher your own child to be back on Monday to be, you know, clickety clacking onto the we'll t- have, keyboard. Uh, Tiff's treats at your desk when you come back. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Right. We'll have Tiff. We'll have a Tiff's treats for you. Right. While you go back to your little cubicle. Yeah. Right to be continuing on into your useless, pathetic life as a drone for some corporation because because thank you for killing your child because that's a lot. You cheaper. saved us some money. Yeah, you saved us Those a lot of money. Six weeks that we were gonna have to pay for your leave or longer. Right, some some places go f- uh, several months. Right. Well, typically in America, that's pretty much the standard. But unfortunately, like overseas, like you know, more traditional valued cultures. Like Sweden and stuff, they even give like the males the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, Have well, you ever uh, heard of paternity leave people? You want to talk about equality and sexism? Well, well, well hey, hey. Well, I'm sorry. Mayor, I, I got Mayor I got into Mayor, it for Mayor Pete 
and his and his husband needed that paternity leave. Oh, they did. Even though they didn't go through anything as far as birth hard. recovery, apparently. <laughs> so. No, as you've had three, I'm about to have my third. Like I got a full time job. Like my wife has had a C section both times. The recovery for that, this is they rough. can yeah. ver- barely get out of bed or turn over. I have to wake up. People want to talk about and joke about. Oh, you know, especially with when women breastfeed, the men has to do nothing because they don't even have to like warm up bottles and mix formula because they just, yeah, you know, the wife has to do all the work. No, especially for like the first like week or two, my wife was just stitched back together through like four layers, mm-hmm. like skin, abs, uterine lining, like everything stitched yeah. up layer by layer. Yeah. She can't turn. There's no core left. It was cut open. I have to get up every time and hand her the baby so she can feed. And then even if the bassinet or the halo basket, whatever you want to call, spend your money on, is right there, same level. It doesn't matter. She can't turn or rotate. Mm -hmm. And when she's done, I've got to get up. It's hard. And then I may be able to do that for a week before I'm going back to work. Mm -hmm. And then my mother-in-law comes over and has to kind of help during the day. Like, it's not easy. We live in a country where that should be more of a primal focus than – and that's what's so funny is is you know because a lot a lot of the left's argument is, well you know a, a man should have to pay a child support from the moment of conception if if that's what right wingers believe and again for us on the right we're like, yeah it's called being married and being responsible for the child. But did you see? You might have be referring to the same clip where that one girl was like, uh, you know if if a fetus is not, if a fetus is a baby then. You know, the man should start paying for child support right away. If a fetus is a baby, then, and the baby dies before it's even born, I should be able to deduct that on life insurance. If a fetus is a baby, mm-hmm. and she keeps right on, and I'm, I'm over here, I'm like, you know what? Pretty much all it's of like, that sounded good fine. to me. fine. Yeah. Okay. That's where, again, this just goes. Like, their points the, are, like, not helping them. Right. Well, it goes back to the point also is that the right understands the left the left doesn't actually understand the right when it comes to our our, our well, it values just comes to logic and, and well exactly and again brain cells the, iq well, simple things simple things like that just no big deal but here's the thing is that is that for the individuals i think on the right today would look at those things whether and again many of us would be because for, for me i am for a uh, longer maternity for for women sure i think they should have uh if they are working moms they should have more spaces whether it's for uh, whether it's daycares at their at their um, at wherever they work or ability to or even to the stay-at-home mom side, you can't claim that on taxes. Do what? It's even stay-at-home moms, you can't claim that on taxes. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we talked ch- about this. Yeah. yeah, I mean multiple times. For me, I, for for policies that are genuinely focused on empowering the nuclear family, I'm more than willing to to at least entertain them a, a source. But a lot of times the left will say, well, if you're for things that you need to be for, you, you have to be for universal health care, this, that. It's like, no, 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 no. I don't need to adopt left-wing positions because I want babies to live, okay? I understand that we should probably change some things to make it easier to have children. I'm all for that. I have no problem entertaining different laws or 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 uh or health care provisions that allow for the the encouragement of families but this idea to, w- that we have to adopt all these left-wing positions i'm no, you don't you don't have to and again my my only counter argument a lot of times for these different things for whether it's longer maternity leave or even who's gonna pay, pay for, for or, or even paid for um uh um uh, uh childbearing costs like you know the cost to have a child they should be paid for I don't have a problem with entertaining those things in all honesty, but if we're going to entertain those things, my response is, okay, what are we going to get rid of? Because there's a lot of things that we pay for as a country. You got to trim the fat. Yeah. So we, I don't mind paying for that, but I want you to get rid of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right. I have no problem with that. As long as we get rid of, of, of government spending in other areas, I don't, I have no problem with it because my focus is, what I care about the most in general is allowing the average American to be able to have a job, pay for their expenses, have a house, and have children. Any policy should be focused in on how do we help families do that in a responsible way, not just blowing out spending and turning us into Weimar Germany where we're shoveling uh, dollars into trash bags because they're worthless. Well, that that is not a solution. Countries like these longer, like Sweden, Switzerland, like 
where they have these maternity leaves that are like two months long or they have the paternities that are like just as long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. It may be a government like sanctioned thing, but most of the time it's the companies that are paying for it. Well, again, whether it's Sweden or these different uh, uh, Nordic countries that, that Bernie Sanders again, will claim are, 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 are socialists. We've said it it's, before. You know why they work? They're homo- homogenous. Well, they're homogenous, number one. But then number two is they're, they're just capitalistic countries that have large social programs, but also the U.S. covers all their defense spending. So they don't have to worry about that. That's another part of it. That, it's you know, crazy when you don't, don't have to defend yourself. <laughs> Shocker, right? Yeah, when the U.S. is flipping the bill on your defense, right? Yeah, you, you can pay for a lot, of other, a lot of this other bullshit, okay? So that there, there is that aspect, right? And so – well, well, and that's where the, the, there's just again this lack of understanding. Again, education they just don't. Yep. They don't see the dollars and cents, and a lot of times it's because it's just they don't. They don't understand very simple of economics because a lot of times they are. They're not free thinking. It's what they've been told. They don't think for themselves. Well, well yeah, I mean, people that live in urban. It's all about centers, how can you help me? Yeah, a lot of times, a lot of people that live in urban centers don't. They just don't understand things because again. When you live in an urban center, you're a lot. You have a lot closer relationship to government, right? Even on a local level, than someone that lives in a suburban or a rural area. You just have a a a a because for me, I we are technically in Harris County, which is the county for the city of Houston, and yeah, we don't I mean, have it's all we don't have the a greater Houston area. Yeah, yeah. But, but my point is that we don't have a close relationship with the local government of Houston. Um, or I try to have a as small of a relationship as possible because it's ran by a bunch of effing morons. Uh, hopefully, not much longer. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens in November, I mm. suppose. But you know, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> just got totally sidetracked there. But th- they don't understand these things, right? And it's it's very noticeable in their arguments for these different programs and everything like that, and. You know, when they talk about it, and it is usually these these urban liberal types that talk about, you know, that that they happen to be left wing and usually communist or at least, you know, favor communistic ideas in a lot of ways, even they don't realize it is. They are the bourgeoisie that the proletariat will destroy, I think, because here's what's funny is although you and I are middle class individuals. Because we live in in the suburbs, and I think also just because the way you and I grow up, we right. we relate more to working class individuals more than the bourgeois, urban liberal type of person who maybe has a similar standard of living, living excuse me, but our ideals are just so different, and it's just two different worlds, and you know, I I, I it kind of got I, I'm kind of getting uh, sidetracked here, but but. It's just funny to me how they don't realize that they are the bourgeoisie that will – that the proletariat is supposed to go after. Because what people don't realize is bourgeois, the bourgeoisie that Marx was talking about refer to the middle class, not the not the, the elites. Right? That's where right. this weird connection is because the reason why the Marx attacked the middle class or, the, or again, the bourgeoisie as he, as he framed it was that – the working class could see that as uh, obtainable, right? I can get to that, right? Because, and which is true, someone who is maybe lower income can conceive becoming middle class, Through where hard work, becoming yeah. part of the elites, right? The, mm-hmm. the millionaires, billionaires seems really. And they don't like that because that's old money, new money, and it's right. And again, is it impossible to become a millionaire, billionaire? No, it's not. But it's a lot more feasible to become a middle class person, especially in a place mm-hmm. like the United States, where I- income uh, mobility is is pretty. Uh, uh, attainable, and so um, again, this got into like an economics <laughs> conversation quickly, but but it, it, it's the core of a lot of their fundamental beliefs, right? Mm-hmm. It's just this this communistic anti-human sort of idea that is 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 encouraged by individuals who are just I I, I guess, again manipulated, confused. I don't know. But but it, but it kind of again to get back on our conversation because of course you know uh, you know to, to focus in on Roe is the most disturbing response has actually been from the federal government themselves because you know women going on sex strike or you know different TV pundits talking about this stuff it's par for the course you know Whoopi Goldberg making a fool of herself is kind of a, a regular Tuesday. 
Yeah, all of them. Any, any. What's Whoopi, Joy Reid, all of them? What is that? Good Morning America. What is that? Uh, it's the View. The View. It, it's that's the what view. it is. Like they're they're all gonna chime in. They're Colbert. gonna spout off and say stupid things. Yeah, all of them. Get used to it. What, what was more? What has been more disturbing of this week has been actually the federal government's response to the 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 Supreme Court's decision, and the reason why is. What has made America great is a separation of powers, right, between the judicial, executive, and the legislative branch. And we have witnessed the executive branch and even the legislative to a certain extent, but certainly the legis- the, the executive going after the judicial branch. Starting with DOJ, where the DOJ actually released a an official statement um Bad mouthing SCOTUS's decision on Roe v. Wade, which has never been done before, uh, which is very inappropriate that the Merrick Garland controlled DOJ would make some sort of statement on a, a, a Supreme Court decision because they're two separate branches of government. They have no business talking about that, which is really disturbing. Mm. But then you had President Biden, who's been who's at the G7 event, right, with talking with European. He's not even in the in the country, right? And he's bad mouthing the Supreme Court, the judicial branch of the United States, to a bunch of European leaders. Which, uh, at the end of the day, I don't give a shit what a European leader thinks about the United States. I don't right, but give it's a like, crap. It's like airing dirty laundry to Correct. your neighbor. Like, yes, keep it within your four walls. Right. And so this is why I want to. You know, we'll probably end up rounding it out with, with this, but but this is important because this is this is important in regards to you know. This is something I've brought up when we've had several guests on, mm-hmm. um, but the, the 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 prospect of civil war in the United States or civil strife, however someone wants to 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 um, define it, things like this makes that more of a, of a realistic possibility. Okay, so this is what Joe Biden said while he was stumbling around. Um, uh, uh, Europe. So President uh, Biden said he would support the ending of the filibuster, a Senate rule requiring at least 60 senators to proceed with an issue to codify abortion rights uh, to the privacy uh, to privacy uh, through the congressional uh, congressional legislation. Uh, and again, the, the the biggest problem with this is not necessarily that President Biden or, or former Vice President Joe Biden, I should say. Uh, is is supporting end of the filibuster because the Democrats have been talking about that for a long time, right? It's that again he was in front of European leaders again, like you, like the way you put it, airing out this dirty laundry. It's like where's his handler? Uh, yeah, uh, somebody. Yeah. You know when those doggy leashes that's got the retractable. You know, for smaller animals, not like German shepherds, but like little pomeranians. Right. Yeah. You could like yank them back and like mm-hmm. ruin it. He needs one. Yeah, so he had, he was who he was talking to. Uh, so he's talking to these European leaders. So he said, uh, "quote uh, The most important thing we have uh, to change, I believe, is we have to codify Roe v. Wade in law." Uh, he said to a, a press conference following the G7 and NATO summit, uh, and he said, uh, "And the way to do that is to make sure that Congress votes to do that. And if the filibuster gets in the way, it's like voting rights. It should." Be that we provide an exception to this, requiring an exception to the filibuster for this action to deal with the Supreme Court decision. So, of course, as per usual, he's race hustling using voting rights as the catalyst, right? Because you know, race is the only car that Democrats think they have, even though they're the bi- they've been the biggest racist throughout the history of the United States. It's That's just the- all about voting with these people. Well, it's an easy, again, it's the easy thing to go to race because, sadly. When it comes to minority voters in the United States for a long time, I think that's changing now, but for a long time, you used race as your uh, as the catalyst for your issue. You were going to get their support. Right. It's the way it was. Uh, but luckily, thanks to the dissemination of information that's changing, where, again, we're obviously you're seeing a lot of Hispanics that are switching to Republicans in large waves. Even even uh, black men are, are starting to become Republicans in, in larger numbers, uh, thanks which is awesome. Thanks to information. Communication, and technology, also, and also the internet to Donald Trump. Also, oh. uh, President Trump was a big catalyst for, for this move. 
But uh, I mean, even things like because he was actually kind of kind of kind of macho in his in the way he handled things, and uh, the reality is, oh yes, it's not that, I he, mean, he ruined a lot for a lot of people. But oh yeah, he, he, he is a very a fragile right. ego. I, I don't get me wrong. President Trump had a very fragile ego, but but, but he handled himself because well because of, a lot of, of areas. the internet and things like silly things like Reddit and TikTok. People are becoming more exposed to what is real, and they can educate themselves and find other sources. Yeah, yeah. Then what? The mass media is, is putting out. So I mean, right. Times are changing. Right. Exa- yeah. Absolutely. And so and so the biggest thing from this is following President Biden's statement is that is that the Pentagon or the Department of Defense, I should say, announced that they would continue to perform abortions on basis consistent with federal law. I'm not sure what federal law they're talking about. Because there's no more federal law. Well, yeah. yeah. Isn't even that the whole it, point of Roe versus Wade? Well, that was, but you know, uh, even if they are in states that are, that uh, with total ban. This is where we're going to run into a situation of potentially civil war igniting. Well, because if it's becoming state versus fed, correct. So, because here's a scenario, right? And, and our state, Texas, is a good example for this because we're we're uh, um, about twenty days away from the trigger law for Texas going into effect, where abortion is effectively banned no matter what, and so. What happens if you have a base? There's several, many in Texas where just yeah, just a few. You have a civilian contracted doctor who lives off base and goes and performs these procedures. Well, he's a Texas licensed doctor or physician. Correct. So the reality is, therefore, based on state law, he can't. He would be arrested on right. federal charges for what he or, or on, on felony charges. Excuse me. For what he did. But if he's on federal property, then is he allowed? But it's a state license, not a federal license. And that's where you have these this is gonna this, be a weird this, thing. this civilian or, or, or civil strife come to a point because right. again, the biggest one a catalyst for the civil war, and this is not in defense of the South at all, but this this is a point that people have to understand. Mm-hmm. Is that you at the time you had the Fugitive Slave Act, which required that northern states return escaped slaves to southern states. Now, for me, and I think for anyone who has any sort of moral compass, the North did the right thing in saying, no, we are not going to do that. But in response, the South said, okay, well, if you will not abide by the laws that were agreed upon, there is no union. We're out. Right? And so that okay, happened so first war, yeah. before you had the Fort Sumter and a lot of, and everything else that led to the so Civil you're saying War. This is similar. So we're war. talking about a similar situation. Yeah. Now, granted, in in this situation, I would say this the state of Texas would be in the right in defending the fact that this person just killed another individual, right? Because again, not only by the state of Texas based on uh, Ken Paxton, our attorney general, uh, to be – well, he's attorney general now, but I, I believe he'll win uh, his election in November at, for attorney general of Texas. Um, is saying I'm going to – we are going to prosecute these in, these doctors if they do mm-hmm. uh, perform an abortion. And so in that case, what do you do? Right, You're going to have, again, states going against the Fed. And so what happens there? Now, granted – I'm certainly not going to outright say that civil war will happen. But again, these are things that are going to be possibilities that happen. Again, not in just Texas, but there's a lot of other states that have trigger laws as well, similar right. to Texas. And they have federal property in their state that are things like military bases and such. Mm-hmm. What is going to happen? So on a federal level, this is done. Donezo. SCOTUS did his job. But Correct, right. military tends to do military things, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, uh, absolutely. Military bases. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And you again, talk about a civilian doctor coming in onto a base, but they have their own doctors and stuff too. Right. And so, again, so th- that what happens on a base that we layer. don't know about. What happens if the doctor is a is a, is a a member of the military, lives on base, yeah. but they're in – they're they're within the state jurisdiction on state land. So what what do you do? Are I, they on state land or is it federal land? I I don't see. I don't know. Do, do you have a, be do, do you have state troopers go in and arrest that doctor? I I, I don't know. Does the military see, police get the involved? The problem is when you yeah. And the problem is when you have 
the Pentagon or the DOD and the president making these sort of statements, you make that situation what, what the judicial branch is saying. Correct. You make these situations actually much it worse. It sounds like the executive is trying to overpower the judicial. It, they are. Which, I mean, that's the whole point of checks and balances. I mean, the executive right. can't just do whatever it wants. I mean, the executive has been getting more and more powerful with all these executive orders and everything else, thinking that they can yeah. just be everything. All the way back from, from Bush. All, yeah. all the way back from Bush. You know, you know, so this is not a, 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 a only Democrat. It has been an issue since, again, since, since, uh, since W. So, um, you know, I, again, for me at the end of the day, for me, I, I am very optimistic on the future of the country. Oh yeah. I mean, this is a, this is a good start in the right direction. We don't know. Only time will tell how this falls out. Yeah. With, yeah, obviously yeah. with the Pentagon and, and Biden saying, but, but Biden, I could ignore if Biden, Biden just talks. But things like the Pentagon, things like that, it's, it's a little bit more uneasy, and we'll just yeah. time will tell. You know, time will tell, but I, I think ultimately, this is why this is a time for conservatives to actually grow a spine and actually be willing to, to do it. Because at the end of the day, the pro life movement actually starts now. Mm -hmm. Because for a, for a lot of politicians, they use Roe v. Wade as the reason why they couldn't do anything. Because their hands were tied. Well, now you know, it's which, gone. We'll see what Sure, fine. But now your hands are no longer tied. So now it's time to, 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 to uh, uh, as um, uh, Woody Harrelson's character said in Zombieland, it was time to nut up or shut up. It's a good quote. It is a good quote, especially for, for any guys listening. Um, you should live your life by that uh, quote. But it's time to do what you said you were going to do. You you want to fight for, 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 for any pro-life uh, uh, organization – you want to fight for the right of these for, for you want to fight for these children these unborn children now it's the time to actually fight this right. is this is now this is the moment that we've been waiting for right this is the moment that we that many people you know if you're religious this is the moment you've been praying for you know is now where we wait is gone now what do we do and it's time to to actually get moving and, and actually take action and you know Again, for me, I'm very optimistic. I think we're heading in the right direction. I think, you know, this is going to hopefully – again, you know, it, what's funny is you have even like in, Business Insider having an article saying, well, Gen Z are, are now, you know, uh, rethinking hookup culture and things like that. Now, they framed it as a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing not only because I, I think it's going to be healthier for these younger, you know, individuals because they're you right. know, at, at, at least four or five years younger than you and I uh, and then also younger than that, obviously – I think it's going to be beneficial for them on an emotional, psychological level for them not to be participating in, in meaningless sex. Um, and, and I think it's going Casual to help them. things. Yeah. And I think it's going to help them realize that, you know, this is more important. I need to wait till I'm married. I need to focus on having children. And I think we're on our way to um, uh, a very positive future for the country. But again, just like the left made this march starting in the early 1900s and and they're seeing the fruits of that now. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a decades-long battle to, to get us in a place where we're on a on the right trajectory. And I, But it, we're, this is the right start. This is the right thing. And so I think th th if there's anything we want to leave you with, uh, obviously I know this is – I think this is probably a little bit longer than we normally go. But Typically. but uh, this is a big deal. I mean this Roe v. This Wade being struck down, which yeah. you know, before now I, I didn't think this was going to happen in our lifetime, and it did. Um, you know, It seems like nothing – I mean, you, you, you pray about it. You, you, you think you vote and elect the right people and they yeah. end up being spineless yeah. Dan Crenshaw, other people. But uh, <laughs> here we are, and it's a big moment. I it mean, is. It is. And, you, you know, it's true. for one thing, again, we need to thank, uh, you know, uh, Harry Reid, Democratic, former Grand Democratic senator. Uh, Join his, the Clarence Thomas fan club, buy you, a T-shirt. You should because he's the he's the greatest American there is. Just please do it so Christian can talk, stop talking about it. Just I'll never <laughs> stop talking about Clarence Thomas. Uh, but then also, um, you know, this is I think it's very appropriate that this is coming down with Fourth of July coming around the corner. This episode will be going up uh, well on YouTube will be going up right before uh Fourth of July, before. but it will go up on, on Spotify and everything, I think on Fourth of July. I think that's Monday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On um you know, when I think about the founders, when I think about what those individuals sacrificed to create this country, um I think Roe v. Wade being struck down and the right to life being defended is something that the founders would would be smile on, yeah, I smile on, so. and be proud of because I believe that 
they would uh, they would look upon that and say you know this that was a grave evil and this is this is something that we can shed from uh from the um uh, growing pains i guess that was a, i kind of put that poorly but yeah for like you know, obviously it, we're, we're still a young country and there's growing pains but you know the two greatest black eyes on the united states was slavery and abortion and this is a step towards a getting step. rid of the second black eye of the united I mean, states say what you will about the left i feel like they mean well as uneducated as they are i think in their mind their viewpoint they feel mm-hmm. like they're bettering humanity they're yeah. trying to equality more human rights um they're just going about it in a weird way. I mean, this is another dark stain, and we get to wipe it off our desk. And it's not going to come without its issues, as you were talking, as, yeah. we've, as we've said. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen as a fallout yeah. of this decision, but it's a good decision nonetheless. One, as we've mentioned, we didn't think we'd see in this lifetime. And to yeah. your point, I think I think it's a good day, especially it's coming at, at it couldn't come at a better time yeah. as we're about to celebrate the independence of America. Right, and the th- and and also here's the I guess the last thing I would leave is that. Make sure you do celebrate it, whether it's with family or, mm-hmm. or if you don't have family, you know, go with a parade. Celebrate this country. This is a damn great country. I could, I would not want to live anywhere else. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what the left says. America is a is is a phenomenal place. It has its problems, but it's the greatest country in the world, and um, and, the, and the world is better off that the United States was created, what was was put together. The world is better off that. The revolution of, of 1776 and everything from that point happened. The world is better off for that, and I always stand by that. And and I think um, we have a lot to celebrate this Fourth of July when it comes to the independence and what this country means. At the end of the day, well said. So um, with that, I mean, again, uh, you know, I guess that that kind of wraps up. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, so, a little bit, a little bit longer show, you know, but so f- go like, subscribe. Yeah, like, subscribe, hit the hit the bell. Is Buy a t-shirt bill? Uh, or don't yeah, just yeah. look at them. Oh, whatever. Yeah. If you go to our uh, Instagram uh, at the Counterculture Cast, you can find our our link tree that has our our Teespring's uh, uh, site where it's you true. can find uh, t-shirts that uh, are awesome. I love them. I think we have cool more cool to come. Site. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, but then, again, also go to Apple, Spotify, five star review. Leave a we leave a comment. Uh, and also on here on YouTube, please leave a comment. Uh, let us know. Share with your friends. And uh, we will see y'all. And again, happy Independence Day, America. God bless you. Later.